Hi there everyone, welcome back to the channel. This time it's the turn of Microsoft 365 Groups, but we're not just going to take a look at it, we're going to do a deep dive in it. So are you ready? Let's go. Hi everyone, welcome back to the channel. Andy Malone, Microsoft MVP and Microsoft Certified Trainer. You know, a number of people have asked, Andy, can you do a deep dive into Microsoft 365 Groups? And to be fair, I've done a few things in the past, but I've never really done a focused session. So in this session, we're gonna take a look, look at all aspects of managing and administering Microsoft 365 groups, including keeping you up to date with a couple of important security changes as well. So remember, if you like what you see, go ahead, click on that subscribe button so that you don't miss anything and ring that bell. Um, also, if you have any comments or questions or anything about any of my videos, I love feedback, okay? And I wanna make this channel really interesting for you. So, are we ready to learn? I think we are. Let's take a look. So our journey into Microsoft Groups starts here in the Microsoft 365 Admin Center. There are two places that you can really create and manage uh, Microsoft or Groups, um, which is in the Groups area over here in the Admin Portal, and you can also manage them in Azure Active Directory. Um, both ad, uh, both portals are required, okay? So unfortunately, there is no one portal to rule them all in this case. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna come in to my active groups here. And in active groups, I'm going to say, okay, I want to go and create a group. Now, just before I begin, this is a really nice page because it shows you the name of the groups that we've got, the group name, because every group gets an email address, what type of Microsoft or what type of group it is. And you can see we've got distribution lists, we've got Microsoft 365 groups, we've got security groups. It's cloud-based and Microsoft 365 groups can also become Microsoft Teams. And I'll explain how that works in a second. Membership type can be done either manually by assigning uh, members to the group or dynamically. And I'll explain that as well. Um, groups can either be public or private. So private, only members of the group can gain access to it, whereas public, anyone can join it, as long as you've got permissions. Um, when was the group created? Uh, and there are additional filters and checkboxes that you can fill in. So what I'm gonna do is to create a group, I'm gonna come across here and create group. And you can see that we have four options. So Microsoft 365 group is a kind of special type of group. It's a fully collaborative group. And this is the key word here, collaboration. So with that in mind, you get a, a shared mailbox, you get a shared calendar, a shared uh, SharePoint um, uh, storage, so OneDrive. Uh, you also get a planner, Microsoft planner. The key thing to note here though, is that they're all collaborative tools. So in the old days of Microsoft Exchange, you might have had a public folder. Uh, think of it kind of like that on steroids. All right. The other type of groups are distribution, and this is just, as it says, just purely for distributing mail. There's no permissions, nothing in there. It's just a way that you can organize contacts or mailing lists. A mail-enabled security group. Security, um, security groups are basically where you want to assign permissions and rights but you don't want the collaborative elements of a Microsoft 365 group, okay? So for example, you can control access to OneDrive, SharePoint, Exchange, uh, Microsoft Teams with a security group, all right? Um, you can extend it and so it can become a mail-enabled security group, all right? 
the one thing that you get when you create a 365 group, that's what I'm going to do. So I'm going to call this my uh, STG. Um, I'm going to call it STG sales. Okay. And you can put in a little description if you want to. And you can, again, you can say an owner. Now, the owner permissions are really important because the owner of a permission um, can invite external guests. So by default, an owner um, is an automatic member of a group called guest inviters. So uh, it's a role, actually, an administration role. So just remember that in Microsoft 365, owners can invite guests. So I'm going to click on next. And again, I'm going to put in the name of my email address, give it a group. So I'll just call it STG uh, dash sales. And you can see you now get a nice email address. Do you want this to be public or do you want this to be private? You know, I'm going to be nice. I'm going to leave it as public. Now, one of the things that you can do is you can extend Microsoft Team into your group. I'm often asked, I don't understand what's the difference between a Microsoft Team and a Microsoft Group. A team is a group, a group is a team. It's the same thing. However, I just said that a Microsoft 365 Group, the key word here is collaboration. So you get shared email, shared calendar, shared storage, but it's all Microsoft. If you create a team, what it does, it extends the capabilities of that collaboration so that in Microsoft Teams, you can use third party products and add them in. All right. Very important and very powerful. Now, if you're not sure about the Microsoft team bit, don't worry. You can take that out. You can put the put it back later. I'll show you. So I'm going to click next. I get a nice review and I'm going to go ahead and click on create. All right. So uh, I'll click on close and I'm just going to refresh this page. And I will scroll down and here it here is my uh, groups down here. So here is it. Um, da, 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 where is it? STG sales. Here we go. Yep. So here is my group. You can see it's come in. It's a Microsoft 365 group. At the moment, it's not a Microsoft team. So I'm going to click into it and let's have a look. Now, because it's an assigned group, um, you can only create assigned groups in Microsoft 365. By the way, you can't create dynamic groups. Um, I'm going to click onto the members tab and I'm going to add some members in, I think. All right. So in here, I'm going to say, OK, who do we want to bring in? Um, I'm going to bring in, let's say, Adele. So I'll bring in Adele. I'm going to bring in Alan. And I'm going to bring in Cameron. And you can just start typing as long as there's more than three characters, by the way, when you search. OK, so this will do. And I'm going to go ahead and save those changes. All right. So we'll just looked at creating uh, and also we've added owners and members. Now, importantly, you can also you'll notice, by the way, it says there's no owners. There are. It's the, the screen's just not refreshed yet. Um, I'm going to click on settings. Uh, and again, you can see that we've got some really important settings here. Allow external senders to email this group. So that means that with that email address, people from outside are allowed to email. Send copies of conversations to group members. That's if you're collaborating. Um, do you want to hide it from your company's global address list? So when you go into Outlook and you look, you, you do a search for the group, if that's hidden, the search, it won't show up in the search, basically. All right. Just to show you that you can change the private public anytime. So it's not a problem. All right. There. Look at this. Microsoft Teams. Now, remember, I never created a Microsoft team from this group. 
So, but you can upgrade it. So you can upgrade the group to become a Microsoft team. Now, please note, this is an irreversible decision. So once I click on this, you cannot remove it and they are forever linked. All right. So you can't take it away. So I'm going to go ahead and say, yes, I want this now to be a Microsoft team. OK, so that creates the teams uh, channels in the teams portal. So you see, I can't change it. I can't add that. I can't do anything with it. OK, so that is my uh, Microsoft 365 group. Now, just as a point of interest, by the way, if you've had in the past, let's say, a distribution list. So you can see here I've got a distribution list here. You can upgrade a distribution list to become a Microsoft 365 group. OK, so you can if I just close that down and just scroll back to the top. Uh, not that you would do this with all employees, to be fair, but you can see that this is a distribution list. It is possible to upgrade this to become a Microsoft 365 group. OK, so um, again, allow external senders and there's more settings in the Exchange Center because it's a distribution group. By the way, you can upgrade it with PowerShell. All right. So you can upgrade that with PowerShell. So um, distribution lists can be upgraded to Microsoft 365 groups and then up to Microsoft team. All right. Now, if I come down to the bottom here, I've got a, uh, let's say I've got a, um, you know, for one reason or another, I decide that I no longer need SG uh, sales and I want to get rid of it. So what I can do is I can go ahead and I can delete the group, bearing in mind that you delete all of its content and be careful if it's a Microsoft team, um, it's gone. All right. Now, if you delete that, actually what's happening is it's going into the deleted groups container here. So in the deleted groups container, you can see there it is and it will stay there for 30 days. So I can select that. And of course, I can go ahead and restore that group and everything it was and everything it had in it is restored. So it takes a couple of minutes and there we go and it's back. So that is creating groups in 365. All right. So remember four types of group. OK, so now what I'm going to do is I'm going to flip over and I'm going to show you Azure Active Directory and just show you what's happening here. So just a reminder that Azure Active Directory is the core directory service. That's the service that stores all the user accounts, all the groups, all the device information um, for uh, Microsoft. And the easiest way, what the reason why we call it Azure Active Directory is because in the old days, if you had a Windows server environment, there was a database on it called Active Directory and you could manage your users um, and that you could only have one single instance of that. So because this is a uh, what we call identity as a service, um, it's a multi-tenant solution. So think of it like a filing cabinet where the filing cabinet is Azure and each individual drawer is what we call a tenant. OK, so I'm going to go into groups here and look at this. Look, here's all our groups. So we can see that we've got our groups here. Um, now, you can see I can only go down and I'd have to view more. But one of the things that you can do, of course, you can search for a particular group here. So again, it shows me the type of group that it is, that it's assigned. And I've got an email for the group. And again, it's cloud based. Um, I can go up here and I can create a new group. OK, now you can see the group type. Ah, now here, because you're doing it in Azure AD, you, you've only got the two choices. I don't have the choice to do distribution lists. 
because that's an Exchange feature, which is actually in Microsoft Exchange Online, AKA Office 365. So in here, you can create uh, a 365 group. You can see I can do the same thing again. Um, <clears throat> and again, it's just a different way of doing it. But this time you get a lot more options. So instead of doing a 365 group, I'm going to create a security group and I'm going to call this um, STG um, dash, sorry, dash, I'll call it support. Okay. I can put in a dis uh, description. Um, we have a new feature in groups where you can add roles. So a role means an admin role. So if you've got an administrator, um, and we have different administration roles, such as user administration, uh, password administration, um, security admin, compliance admin, and so on. So basically, um, if you it will automatically add that role to the group. So that's a new feature. Azure AD roles. Yeah, so I just said that. Right. Um, now, membership type here. Look at this. So by default, it says, do you want to assign members? I.e., I can go ahead and I can assign you. Or look, now I can choose dynamic. So you can have a dynamic user and dynamic devices in 365. So um, anybody, if you've got, let's say, uh, an iPhone, it automatically becomes a member of this device group. Um, for this case, I'm going to choose a uh, user and um, user role. Um, I'll show you how that works. So I'm going to do a dynamic user and I'm going to create, um, you don't have to put an owner in. I suppose I could. Um, I will just put uh, Megan in again. I'm going to add in Megan and click on select. This time though, I'm going to create a dynamic query and you can either click on the drop down arrows and choose the different fields um, or you can manually edit it okay so you can edit this so what I'm going to do is I'm going to uh, select the different options here and you can see there's loads so department equals sales and you get the idea so I'm going to do this city um, and I'm going to say equals and I'm going to say, um, let's say Sterling. I live in Bonnie, Scotland. Okay. So basically, if you're in the city equals Sterling, you're going to be automatically be a member of this group. All right. And that's it. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to create this group. Now, while that's there, what I'm doing going to do is I'm just going to flip back into the admin center and I'm going to go into users here. So into my users and I am going to, I have, uh, I'll create a template actually. Um, yes. So I'm going to create a user and I'm going to call this guy um, Albert Smith. Okay, I know it's not very original, but there we go. So he's called Smith A. Okay, you can see email address, automatically create a password. Yeah, that's fine. And it will send a reminder to change the password. <coughs> Excuse me. And I'm going to click next. Um, here it's going to say, do you want to assign a license? Where's your location? Just to let you know, this is really important when you choose your location um, because this is the data center where your data will be stored. So for me, I'm gonna scroll down and I am actually in the UK. Okay, and I can now go ahead and assign a license to this user, all right? So I'm going to say, yep, yeah, I'm going to assign an, um, an E5 license. I'm going to assign enterprise mobility and I'm going to assign them a Windows 10 license. Okay. I'm going to click on next and 
I, do, do I want this user to be an administrator of any kind so I can make this user an administrator? Um, no, I don't think so. I think Albert's fine. He doesn't need anything else. Now, if I scroll down, it says profile information. Okay, so I can scroll down here and it can say he's in the sales department. He's in the office. In fact, I will. I'll say he's in sales. I'll say he's, um, and you can, you know what's coming now, right? So this guy, he's in Sterling. Okay, and what's going to happen? So now this guy will automatically become a member of that group. Okay, that's how it works. Yes, so next, and I'm going to finish. And then I'm, uh, when I create a user, by the way, it says, hey, do you want to... Uh, give it a template, so I'm going to, I'll call it full-time employee uh, UK, okay, and uh, I can put in a description, um, and I can say, do I want this template to be available to other admins, so I'm going to, uh, oh, one thing, you need to save it, yes, yeah, so I'm going to save the template, and I'm going to close, so now, if I want to create a user, I can just simply there's the template. So I can create a user directly from that. Now, um, what happens is um, there is a background process and occasionally it polls Act Azure Active Directory and it says, is there anything new? Is there anything new? Now, it polls every few, few minutes, every few hours. So now that I've added in Albert, he will now become a member of that group that I've put in. And that's what we mean by dynamic membership. You understand? Okay. Now, just before we go from here, um, I'm still in the groups option in Azure Active Directory. And there are some very important settings here. All right. So in the general tab, um, this talks about self-service group management. Please note that depending on the license that you have for 365, some of these features may not be available. Dynamic groups are available on every SKU except business basic. All right. <clears throat> Um, one, you saw me create Microsoft 365 groups. Now, would you be shocked to know that anybody can create a Microsoft 365 group? And in fact, um, if I go into my portal and if I just open up Outlook, remember what I said, it's a collaborative group. Okay. So, um, sorry, just close that down. Um, and you can see here's all my groups. Look, so here's my groups. So, for example, I'm um, a member of the Mark 8 project team. So look at this collaboration. It's a shared group experience. I get a shared document library in SharePoint. Look, all my stuff's here. Awesome. Um, I also get a shared calendar experience. So I can arrange meetings and see what, what's going on in my day. Um, so that's, again, that's fantastic. Um, the other thing that you also get, of course, um, is you get, you've got other things. Here. So you get a OneNote, you get Planner and so on. And of course, if Mark 8 is a team, you also get access to a Microsoft team as well. So that's what we mean now. The problem that I have with groups, okay, is that um, essentially anybody can create a group, all right? So look, anybody can create a, a group here, um, and that's a problem, right? So one of the things that you might want to do in 365 is you might want to restrict that, okay? So users can create groups in the portals. So you might want to say, no, I don't want to do that. So that's a good tip. Um, <clears throat> as you can appreciate, if you have groups all over the place, uh, 
you know, they could mushroom out of control. And often you find that users might create a group and then, you know, six months later, they've never used it. Or maybe there's just got a couple of documents in there. So we have this, um, oh, sorry, yeah. Um, so we've got this um, uh, expiration feature here, which again is really useful. So what you can do is you can actually put in a group lifetime here. So I could say one year or six months or three months or whatever you want. I could put in the email address of a, uh, a support person or a, a group, even a support help desk. And I can say enable expiration for these Microsoft 365 groups. So STG sales. Yes. Get the idea. So that in one year's time, um, what will happen is if there is no, if there's no body working in that group, it will be deleted. Ah, now you're thinking, ah, that's good, Andy, but what if I am working on it? I don't want it deleted. You can relax, don't worry, because it it's AI driven, artificial intelligence. So it, it detects that if you if you're working on it, if there's traffic going through it, it doesn't delete it. All right. So that's what we mean by um, the expiry. Okay. So again, really nice feature. You can also go into a naming policy for the group. So uh, enable custom blocked words. So you can either uh, open up a, a CSV file. That means comma separated value. In other words, it's just like an Excel spreadsheet. So you can just add a list of words and just upload that. So any naughty words you don't want in can go in there. You can also um, set up a group naming policy as well. And this is where you can have, you know, I'm sure you've seen this. In fact, you, you can see it here in my groups. Um, so if I go back into my uh, portal um, and if I go back into groups here. And if I scroll down, you'll notice that some of these groups see this. So HGHR, HGIT, HG Legal. So if you wanted, you know, this could be your company name or something like that. So you could have a prefix or a suffix. So before and after. Okay. So that's quite good. Yeah. And that's how easy uh, it is to do that. Now, one other thing, and I'll cover this in a future session is in you've got this uh, privileged access group reviews. So if you've got access to a group um, and you're thinking, OK, I don't know if Bob still needs that. So I'm going to um, maybe give him access later or, you know, I want to maybe say like in three months time, does he still need access? Well, one of the things you can do is you can actually uh, go in there and it will do a review. You can set a date for a review and you can say, OK, he obviously doesn't need that anymore. I can remove him from the group. So that's a nice feature. OK, so th there we go. So there you have it. A deep dive into Microsoft Groups uh, as part of Microsoft 365 and Azure Active Directory. I really hope you enjoyed that session. And as always, if you did, go ahead, uh, post any comments below, by the way. I really value those. And if you want to ask any questions, again, please do so. If you've enjoyed the session, go ahead, click on that subscribe button, ring that bell, and don't miss any future postings. And I'll see you next time around. So you stay safe. Okay. Thank you very much. Thanks so much for dropping by. Remember, you can visit me at andymalone.org and go ahead and click on that subscribe button so that you don't miss a thing. I'll see you next time.